Hi guys, this is Karthik Arora. So first of all, guys, thanks a lot for all the appreciations that you have been giving me and all the support that I'm getting in YouTube comments and inboxes everywhere. So it really motivates me to work hard and make more quality content. So guys, keep supporting and keep sharing my channel. This is really motivating me to make more and more good content. So for this video, I'll be discussing the problem distance queries from the tree algorithm section of CSES. And this is probably the easiest problem of the entire section. And uh, like it is the easiest if you know how to find out LCA in log n time or log squared n time. So if you don't know this, you should first of all check out my videos on how to find LCA in log n or log, n, log squared n and only then try this problem. But this is quite an easy problem. Let's approach it now. So you're given a tree having n nodes and uh, let's take this particular example. We are given this tree. Now you, now you will be given Q number of queries and each query you will be asked what is the distance between node U and node V and U and V will be different for each and every query. You will be given Q such queries. So for example, the query is what is the distance between node 1 and 3? So you can simply see and it's 1. The distance is 1. Then they'll ask, okay, what is the distance between node 2 and 5? So this is the distance 1, 2 and 3. So you can simply say, okay, 3. And finally, distance between 1 and 4. So you can clearly see it's 1 and 2. So the distance will be 2. So this is your output. Now, hopefully the problem statement is clear. You just have to find out the distance between the nodes U and V for every query. Let's move to the solution and uh, of course there exists a direct brute force idea in which for every query you will pick node u from node u you are going to run a breadth first search till node v and you will find out what is the distance between u and v using your breadth first search and that's it that is the solution right but for running a breadth first search once the time complexity is big of n and since you'll have to run it q times so it's big of n into q so this is not efficient enough because both of these are up to 10 power 5. So let's think about the problem in a more uh, clear manner. So basically we are given two nodes u and v. Also let's just root the tree at node number one without any loss of generality. It does not matter whether your tree is rooted or not because anyway you are only interested in the path lengths between two nodes. Rooting a tree does not affect the path lengths between any nodes, right? So let's say that I want to find out the path length from u to v and I'm assuming that u is farther away from the root compared to v. So u is at a lower level compared to v and v is closer to the root, u is farther away from the root. So if you would have run a BFS from u to v, the path that you would have found out would be something like this. And assume that v is not the ancestor of u. So v is not ancestor of u. Let's just assume this for now, although it could be, but for now, let's just solve the problem that our nodes u and v will not, uh, none of these will be the ancestor of the other. So if I wanted to find out the path from u to v and u is at a loop is further away from the root, uh, root as compared to v, then the paths that I will find out would be something like this. From u, I'm going to first of all ascend upwards, finally reach a node such that this node x, x the subtree rooted at node x contains both u and v. And from x, I will descend to v. This is going to be the generic idea of the path that I'm going to find if I run a BFS from u to v. And this particular node x is also known as the LCA if you think about it. Because this is the first node starting from u if you keep going upwards towards the root. This is the first node that whose subtree contains both u and v. So if you were finding out the LCA and going up from u till the root and v till the root, then this would have been the first node which would have been common in the parts, paths from u to root and v to root and that is the definition for LCA. So basically any path that starts from a, uh, from a node further away from the root to some other node that is comparatively closer to the root will follow this kind of, uh, this kind of path. Okay, From you are going, first there is going to be an ascent, you hit the LC of the two nodes and then there is going to be a des descent. So that is cool, but still, uh, how do I found, find this particular path? Let's say you know the LCA, you know, know what is node U and V, but still, how do I find this overall path length? So let's say you know the level of all these nodes. 
root is at level 0, x is at some level, u is at some other level and v is at some other level. So first of all from le the level of u, you will ascend till you reach the level of x and this particular path length from u to x, this particular path length is nothing but the difference between the levels of u and x. So path length of x, not x, path length of u comma x. This is the power, uh, distance between u and x. Similarly, the distance from x to v will be the difference between the levels of x and v because this will be the descent that you have to do. The num this will be the descent in the levels and one time you go down you cover one uh, one level so overall you had to cover this many levels so this will be the path length from x to v so you know what is the path length from x to v this can also be found out using the difference in the levels overall path length from u to v is basically the sum of the path lengths from u to x and plus the path length from x to v so that's it, that is the entire idea. You can add these two values together and you have found out the answer. But what if V is the ancestor of U? Even in that, uh, even in that case, you will first ascend and then you will not descend, but that means that the descent overall is zero. So here X, the LCA of node U and V is going to be simply V. The path, uh, the difference between, difference between the levels of U and V will give you the path length from U to V and the path length from v to v will be zero so you could simply follow this same idea to solve all the queries and you are done so simply given two nodes find the lc of the two nodes then find the difference between the levels of u and x and x and v add them together that is going to be the answer for your query all you have to do is find lca in log n time and you are done so now i'll be showing you uh, writing the code for this let's get it over with quickly it's quite simple and I'm, I'll be using my previous code of binary lifting and LCA. So if you, if you have any doubt guys, you can uh, watch those videos first. So I'm given these two nodes U and V. Let's find the LCA of these two nodes. Call it X. So now I have the LCA. So we discussed that the overall path length is going to be integer path length is going to be the path from U to X. The path length from U to X. That is the difference between the levels of U and X. and plus the path length from v to x finally i'll just print the path length and we're done just one thing here that i guess the format of input i'm, I'm using incorrectly so i should correct this also I guess this should work. Let's just try it, try it out once. Okay, there's some error. Okay, I missed a semicolon. So one, three and two. And yeah, that's correct. Let me just submit it. So guys, if you found the video helpful, make sure that you like, share and subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching.